You stood me up. Sorry? We had a date in the dark room. Hey, I was there. Oh, really? Hiding? You didn't show up. Well, I most certainly did. I was a little bit late. I had to stop and pick up uh, a lens, but... Well, then, I guess we just, uh... We just missed each other. Well, why didn't you wait? Why didn't I wait? Well, time is time. My fault, I'm the guilty party. I paged my niece. Of course, that's the price you pay when you take in ailing relatives. <laughs> you see, I had crashed into that table for the umpteenth time in a row. What table's that? The table that was right there, that end table. A definite health hazard for an ant on wheels. And Brooke kindly agreed to dispose of it. Where'd you put it? The table? Yeah. Oh, I've hated that table forever. I threw it out. It was really an eyesore anyway, dear. I'm sure you must have mentioned it, but you were too polite to mention it. You know, you have an artist's eye. I think that you should get ready to use it because we're going to redecorate. We? Yeah. I am so tired of conventional. I want something bold, I want something dramatic, I want something with your stamp on it, so... What do you say, huh? Will you be my decorator? That sounds like a full-time job. Well, we could work around your schedule. Well, I've got a better idea. Hmm. Why don't I pack up my gear, check out of the end, and I'll be back on board by the end of the day. What are you talking about, Mo moving in here with me? With us? Well, that's the plan, right? Well, <laughs> after we uh, get married, yeah, Why that's wait? the plan, of course. Oh, but, but, but what would my members of the club say, dear boy? Who's going to tell them? Cindy Adams? <laughs> but, but this isn't New York City, Jim. I mean, this is a small town, and people chatter. They will hear things and say things. I mean... Oh, dear, they're, they're bound to stop in now and then for meeting. All right, all right. I promise I will not wander around in my boxer shorts, nor will I sunbathe nude on the porch. I will shave on a regular basis. And I'll refrain from making love on the couch. <clears throat> well, uh, lest I state the obvious, um, there is Jamie to consider. <laughs> What's to consider? Jamie is away, and what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Well, he's only going to be away for a couple of weeks, and I'm not sure exactly what we're going to say to him when, when he gets we back. We will tell him that we couldn't wait until May. I think he's going to be very disappointed All right, and then confused. There's only one solution. Patience, no, my good man. No, no, not patience. Been there, done that, not about to do it again. <sighs> we'll get married right away. I will not allow an elopement. Sorry, dear, to pull rank, but I want to dance at my niece's wedding. Let's move the wedding up. <sighs> we already moved the wedding up from June to May. It's just, it's only eight weeks away. Two weeks mm -hmm. is better. But Two and I'll a half tops. Still be in this chair. Phoebe, for crying out loud, I will swing you wheels and all around the dance floor. You'll be a regular motorized Ginger Rogers. Edmund can roll you down the aisle. Now, come on, ladies, what do you say? Sounds like an offer we can't refuse. Is that a yes? Why not? Ah, April, the magical month. Give me a day. Okay, now? Well, okay, study the calendar, and when I get back, uh, I want a single-digit number. Oh, you're going away? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a, an appointment in New York with a hot young photographer. It's on the Lower East Side. He has a studio down there. <laughs> I'm thinking a major spread and, uh, you know, in July, the, the fireworks versus candlelight sort of thing, and maybe some wedding pictures thrown. You want bold and dramatic? I'm your guy. Really? A hot new photographer? I have no idea. Is it me, or was Jim acting like the cat that swallowed the canary? Oh, it makes my flesh crawl. I mean, taking charge, pushing the wedding up. You went bold and dramatic. I'm your man. I could have run him over with this wheelchair. 
Where is Edmund? He should have called by now. Well, maybe his car conked out, or the traffic, or... Or Jim. No. What if Jim found out? No, don't go there. I mean, Edmund is fine. Don't forget, he covered the news in the Middle East. He's been in Sarajevo. He knows how to cover his tracks. You're right. You're right. He's fine. I can't wait. Where are you going? I'm going to take advantage of Jim being gone. I'm going to look around the office. If Edmund calls, tell him to call me on his cell phone, OK? OK, darling. I'm sure he'll be here any minute. But be careful, sweetheart. Please, be careful. to do something for me first. You want to help me? Let me go. Sorry, pal. No can do. You know, if you could swing it, I'd really like to shake your hand, but I can see that you're... Yeah. You and Brooke are players. That was quite some mind game you had going, but it's over now. I win. You lose. JT. You see, I'm doing this on my own. Brooke, she still thinks you're a hero. Woodward keeping secrets from Bernstein? <clears throat> I don't think so. Like next time you want to jump in my face, skip the onions for lunch. <sighs> Laughter in the face of danger. I like that. Yeah, beat spitting in the wind. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, because I know you and I know your whole ugly history. But Brooke, she still thinks it's some kind of fairy tale near Prince Charming. Come on, Ed, this is your cover story. Sell it to me. <laughs> oh, what? I'm already your prisoner, you idiot. I can see that, but you look a little lonely. Perhaps I could get Brooke to keep you company. What are you going to do? You're going to tear up the only meal ticket you got? You're going to shackle the one person who still thinks you actually have a heart? Don't you know that she still wants to play this stupid two-by-two -two dance with you down the aisle? And you couldn't bring yourself to break her little heart now, could you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not for lack of trying. Uh, Jim. But see, the problem is... Try it without proof. And actually, with proof, she probably wouldn't because she keeps swallowing your lies. <laughs> As fast as you can give them to her. You are good, Ed. You are good. Now, whether you're lying or not remains to be seen, but you're good. Uh, you have to agree. But you know, you got sloppy on the Ed, which is always an indication that you're underestimating your opponent. You were way, way too quick to accept my offer to be best man. But I think that with some rehearsal, and some coaching. I just might have bought that three caballeros garbage. Your visit with that dumb broad out there at Rawway. Ed, it should have stayed your best kept secret, but no, no, you had to get cocky. So you had to be stopped. So enter Jim Thomason, AKA JT, arsonist, demolition man, porn king. I've really got to update my resume. Your sheepskin and Pulitzer combined can't begin to compete with what I've got. And what's that? Street smarts, Ed. It's called savvy. See, I got my BA at the School of Hard Knocks. I was busting my hump just to keep breathing. And while you were playing it safe behind ivy-covered walls, I was getting an advanced degree in survival. That's why guys like me can go up against guys like you seven days a week without even busting a sweat. It's the law of the jungle, Eddie. 
That's what I was studying while you were boning up on Shakespeare. Speaking of whom, wasn't it Eddie? Wasn't it Richard the Third? Yes, it was. William Shake gave us Richard the Third, which proves that evil not only exists, but prevails. Richard the Third. Richard. Jimbo, you really been holding out on me. <laughs> no, 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 Eddie. Uh, I once uh, accepted a very rare collected works of Shakespeare as payment for a drug dealer myself. Yeah, that's negating the theory that smart guys finish last. Just checking. Just checking to see that if you were listening, it's not that at all. It's the element of surprise that's given me this full furlong lead. It's why you are Prometheus bound and I am footloose and fancy free. It's also why you're going to die. But look at the upside, Ed. You'll be with your dead wife. You murdered my wife! What the hell were you doing on that plane? Answer me, damn it! For the record! Nothing personal. I have nothing against you, your wife, or your family. Your wife was an unfortunate victim, which I deeply regret. Look, you put those plastic explosives on the plane. You knew it was unstable. It was in your suitcase. It never crossed your mind for one minute that the stupid plane might blow up. Ed, Ed, come on. You're giving me a headache. You must think that I am dumber than dirt. I don't do suicide missions. I mean, it's sheer luck I didn't go over that cliff with your wife. You're not even human. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell you what, the fates were kind to me that night. Up to that point, plastic had been putty in my hand, so to speak. You set up a hit, great big bang, and you cash in. Reward money or insurance money, whatever. I always seem to be in the right place at the right time. But this is not a perfect world that we live in, Ed. Accidents happen. But the thing is, is you've got to learn to go with the flow. The plane went down, I went down with it, but you know what? I ended up a freaking hero. You would be fit food right now if I hadn't dragged your ungrateful carcass off of that plane. You say my wife died because she had the dumb luck to be on the plane with you? Oh. Ed, I can't take all of the credit. Your wife died because she got on the same plane with Brooke English. What does Brooke English have to do with it? Silent alarms, no booby traps. Your trust is so touching. with. 